Pharmacists have reported an increase in violent crime against them and in verbal and physical abuse in high street pharmacies. Uh, the Pharmacist Defence Association is a union representing pharmacists and says the majority of their members feel unsafe at work. Chan Kausa is a pharmacist and she had a six inch knife held to her throat. Initially when he held the knife to me it was maybe a couple of inches from my chest and I did just freeze. I could hear my colleagues telling me to come over and pleading with the attacker to let me go over to them. But in the first instance, I couldn't move because I was scared. Joining me on the programme is Bharat Natwani, a London pharmacist and policy officer from the Pharmacist Defence Defense Association. Good morning to you, Bharat. Thanks so much for joining us today. Good morning, Vanessa. It's a pleasure to be here. I mean, this is a really horrible story. And um, we've heard on this programme of many people in all sorts of jobs in London, constantly subject to aggressive attack, uh, both physical and, and verbal, uh, from members of the public, most memorably bus drivers. I remember a conversation I had with the bus driver about what he had to contend with on a daily basis. It was absolutely horrifying. I've never forgotten it. Being spat at, being shouted at, being threatened, being attacked, just, just going about his business trying to drive a bus for me to be. Now, I think a lot of people will think that this is, is an extraordinary state of affairs. Why on earth would anybody come and attack a pharmacist? What is going on? Can you explain for us, please? Well, uh, Vanessa, it, it's interesting you say that because pharmacies are open access, so anyone can walk into a pharmacy, seek the advice of a pharmacist, collect a prescription, pick up over-the-counter medicines. So, you know, you can just walk in without an appointment, which makes pharmacies incredibly accessible, but also incredibly vulnerable. So uh, our members have been telling us that they are feeling a little bit vulnerable. They feel increasingly that customers, because of, of understandable, understandable pressures, around waiting times sometimes they can't get uh, to other health services so they are they come to the pharmacy they may have to wait for a few minutes before they can speak to the pharmacist yeah. uh, they uh, people are, are generally finding we, our members are telling us that sometimes members are becoming ab abusive uh, members of the public start shouting uh, which is not necessary in a pharmacy because it's a healthcare scenario a healthcare place of healthcare so, and a number of our members have told us that they are having to report incidents to the police because uh, there have been acts of threats, acts of physical violence or abuse. So it's it's uh, pretty, pretty frightening that this is uh, an ongoing trend and it seems to be getting worse. And why is it getting worse? Why should it be getting worse? Are queues longer? Are people more stressed following the pandemic? I mean, I just don't know what, why should a situation like that be worsening? I think there, there is an element of, of, of stress there. Uh, there may be an element of a slight increase in waiting times, primarily because pharmacies have become increasingly busy. Uh, also, we've noticed that there's been a, a reduction in staffing uh, by, by some contractors. So there's more pressure on the pharmacist and, uh, and his or her time. So incredibly uh, thinly spread. So if you can imagine you're dispensing prescriptions and a prescription will need a clinical check, which involves a fair amount of time ensuring that the, the prescription is fit for purpose for the patient. Now, just because a, 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 a patient at the front counter can't see that pharmacist uh, doesn't mean that pharmacist isn't there, isn't busy working in the background because there's lots of activities which go on which can't be seen. Oh. So people get frustrated. They, they don't see someone at the front counter. They think there's no one there, but there are. There's incredible amounts of work which is going on in the background. I mean, checking are, prescriptions are we short-staffed when it comes to pharmacists in the same way that people are facing this terrible backlog at airports is because people were laid off over the pandemic. Is it a similar thing that there are insufficient pharmacists? Are they uh, affected by Brexit? Is that one of the reasons why? If, if, if people are getting more frustrated because waiting times are longer, is, is it because there aren't enough staff? Uh, it's not a shortage of pharmacists. It's, a, it's a, sh a shortage of support staff. So you find that the, the individual pharmacist will end up undertaking a lot more activities because there's no one there to support them. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, if you have a big delivery which comes in, a pharmacist may end up having to put away part of that stock, which is uh, something which a member of support staff could do whilst the pharmacist is counselling a patient. But because there's, we've noticed a certain, certain reduction in members of staff uh, across the across GB, in fact, that's leading to extra pressure because the, the pharmacist can, there's only one member of, of, there's only one pharmacist in the store. They can only spread themselves so, so far 
with so many patients. So obviously that leads to an increase in waiting time. So there's a, a shortage of support staff. Our data tells us that there's an increasing number of pharmacists entering the, the pharmacist register. So we don't think there's a, a shortage of pharmacists. Uh, for sure, the data shows that there's a shortage of support staff. And, and that is because of what? Uh, a number of factors. Uh, some employers say that they have, they're struggling to recruit. Um, there's been pressures in, in respect to funding of pharmacies. Uh, there's a whole number of factors which, which have come into play. But generally, uh, there's been a deterioration in, in support staff uh, working in, in community pharmacy. And that's led to a, a number of issues about waiting times, and, and uh, which can understandably lead to a bit of anxiety. Because patients uh, coming to a pharmacy, the expectation is they'll be seen straight away. But there's uh, so many activities of pharmacists and the teams perform in the background, which are not visible. And that can understandably lead to frustration. So let's have a final word from you to customers who, you know, may be feeling ill, may be feeling nervous, may be scared, may be lonely, may be worried about money, may be all manner of things when they show up at the pharmacy desk. But what would you say to them about their behaviour and about the way in which your staff are starting to feel? Well, I would say that on the whole, most customers are, are really lovely, they're really polite and they're really friendly and really understanding. For the few who do sometimes find that the frustrations overtake their normal behaviours and they do resort to sometimes becoming a little bit loud, a little bit threatening, a little bit intimidating, which they may not even feel that being, please be kind. All pharmacists and the teams are working incredibly hard. We are trying our best to support uh, members of the public and support everyone who comes into the pharmacy. So please be assured the pharmacist and the teams are doing the utmost. We are always there to help uh, and to, and to, and to uh, uh, support you, but please be kind. Uh, you may have to wait, but please bear with us. I feel pretty awful that you have to come on the radio and say that. I really do. I mean, it's, it's just a disgraceful, isn't it? I mean, you're professional, you're doing your job, you're doing it as quickly as you, as you can. I'm assuming no pharmacists are deliberately keeping people waiting because they're lazy and, in fact, they're sitting in the back room watching telly and eating crisps. I'm assuming that you're all working hard and to, to, you know, to deliver to the public the most professional and the quickest and most efficient service you possibly can. It really does seem appalling that you would have to make a plea for kindness and clemency towards pharmacists. <laughs> On the radio, it just does. I'm so sorry to hear what you're all going through and I appreciate your joining us Bharat very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. That is Bharat Natwani, a London pharmacist and policy officer from would you believe the Pharmacists Defence Association. Why should pharmacists have to defend themselves? Because we don't seem to know how to behave towards them. That seems to be why.